how much protein are you taking every day? 200 grams of protein supplements a day. Protein is now the fastest growing food supplement in the UK. The global market for protein powder is $18.9 billion per year. Many of us believe that proteins can only be good, but is it true? This is the science of proteins. Disclaimer, proteins are extremely essential components of a healthy diet. In this video, we will discuss the limits of protein supplements, situations where caution is required, and the optimal protein intake based on age, gender, and individual fitness levels. It's the 19th century, a small voyage somewhere in the Arctic. William Stephenson reflects on his life. Born in 1879 in Arnis, Canada, Stephenson studied anthropology at the University of North Dakota and the University of Iowa. He then worked at Harvard University as an instructor, but soon decided to embark on an expedition to Iceland, something he would do for the rest of his life. After years of exploration, he observed something peculiar. Indigenous people of the Arctic traditionally maintained a diet heavily centered around meat and seemed to be very healthy. But whenever indigenous populations in North America had to switch to heavily meat-based diets, they often became sick. Those affected often experienced nausea, an overwhelming urge to eat, and in rare instances, even coma. It didn't make much sense. Both populations had meat-based diets. The only difference was what animals they consumed. Since their discovery, proteins have been hailed as a university healthy source of energy. In the 19th century, Dutch chemist Jörg Mulder examined a series of organic substances including gluten, fibrin or egg. He found that all of them contained an androgynous component. Mulder concluded that all of these organic materials belonged to the same class, proteins. Soon after their discovery, proteins were called, quote, unquestionably the most important of all known substances in the organic kingdom. That's some effective branding, but it's also right. As of today, millions of different proteins have been identified. Proteins can have different shapes, sizes, or functions, but they all contain the same building blocks, amino acids. Amino acids are small organic molecules that form chains to create proteins. Whenever we eat, proteins are broken down in our stomach and guts, and amino acids are released into our bloodstream. We then use these amino acids to build the proteins that keep our bones strong, help us to gain muscle, or support our immune system. And that is important to say the least. In the 1940s, scientists studied the effects of amino acids on the body. They prepared a diet containing fat, oil, vitamins, and sugar. Volunteers then consumed this mixture for eight days. They quickly experienced low appetite, fatigue, and irritability, among other symptoms. Then the scientists also gave them selected amino acids and discovered that the combination of nine amino acids removed the symptoms, and they called them essential amino acids. Besides these nine essential amino acids, the human body also produces 11 amino acids on its own. It was pretty clear proteins are important to stay healthy and fit. What happened next though was unexpected. While proteins have maintained a positive reputation throughout the 20th century, other macronutrients have been demonized. In 1961, a famous report was published that concluded that diets high in fats might directly cause heart disease. That statement is oversimplified at best and incorrect at worst, but that didn't matter. Different branches of the food industry invested heavily in campaigns targeting fats. Quote, the sugar industry formulated a game plan in the mid-1950s to capitalize upon an idea that dietary fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. As a result, food high in fats were often replaced with food high in sugars. Later, sugar was labeled as, quote, poison. The important thing is that, while the arguments between low-carb and low-fat diets went back and forth, proteins largely remained as a healthy food substance. And there are two simple reasons for this. Protein is important for our health, and the body can naturally handle a lot of protein. It is difficult to consume protein levels so high that our bodies encounter problems. Oh, protein supplements first appeared in the 1950s. In the beginning, protein supplements were primarily used by people who engaged in regular exercise and tried to enhance the muscle mass. Pioneers in the protein supplement business included Bob Hoffman or Joe Wader. However, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger who brought his lifestyle into the mainstream. Shout out to my fellow countrymen. What followed is a period some call protein mania. Influenced by the negative reputation of saturated fat and processed sugars, a growing number of people began adopting protein-based diets, and the food industry adapted. Suddenly, the phrase high in protein was plastered on every product imaginable. Protein noodles, protein bagels, protein cookies, or even protein water are all stocked in a supermarket. In most cases, protein supplements and protein-rich diets are not harmful to us. But there are some reports of people who experience serious symptoms when consuming high levels of protein supplements. Is it accurate to blame protein in these cases? Or is something else going on? 
The first report involves an innovation that will probably end up in future history books, explaining how our modern society works. TikTok challenges. Okay. BP is a TikTok influencer who became famous for workout clips. One day, she saw a new TikTok challenge called dry scooping. Dry scooping is a TikTok challenge in which users take scoops of protein powder without mixing it with water. BP decided to join the trend and ate some scoops of a pre-workout protein powder. After some minutes, she felt itchy and started to sweat. She ignored her symptoms and went to the gym. At the gym, her chest started to hurt. Again, she ignored her symptoms and went back home. Late at home, she felt nauseous and had a headache. She ignored her symptoms and went to work, but then her chest pain returned and her left arm started to hurt. At this point, she decided to go to the hospital and was shocked when she was diagnosed with a heart attack. You see, when BP swallowed her pre-workout protein powder, she did not only ingest amino acids, but also other compounds. One of these compounds was caffeine. Caffeine is a substance that in low doses increases our respiration and heart rate, elevating our energy levels. In high concentrations though, caffeine can be dangerous. In BP's case, the caffeine in a pre-workout protein powder overwhelmed the heart and caused a heart attack. The protein itself was not the issue, but other compounds in a pre-workout protein powder. Fortunately, she could be treated accordingly and was soon discharged from the hospital. And this is her reaction to the incident. Okay. Although this case is rather unusual, it raises an important point. Consuming high levels of protein powders can lead to the accumulation of unwanted substances in our bodies. In 2018, a group of researchers tested 133 protein powders for 130 different types of toxins. In most protein powders, traces of heavy metals including arsenic, mercury or lead were found. Moreover, one protein powder contained 25 times the allowed limit of BPA, a chemical that has been linked to infertility, heart disease, or type 2 diabetes. In this case, mostly plant-based protein powders were affected. The main issue here is that supplements are not regulated by the FDA, and that means that contaminations in protein powders are much more likely. You can check the purity of many protein supplements on cleanlabelproject.org in case you're interested. This shows us that it's often not protein or amino acids that might cause trouble, but other compounds in supplements. The next case, though, is different. MH is a 25-year-old bodybuilder from West Australia. For several weeks, she adhered to a strict diet in preparation for a bodybuilding competition. She went to the gym twice a day and consumed copious amounts of protein shakes and supplements. One day, though, she started to feel, quote, weird. She still continued her training, and a few days later, she was found unconscious in her apartment. MH was rushed to the hospital, where doctors found that she was losing mass amounts of brain activity. The doctors tried to save her, but they couldn't. No one could explain her sudden deterioration. Upon further investigation, it was revealed that MH had a massive ammonia buildup in her brain that slowly destroyed her from the inside. Ammonia is a substance that naturally occurs when we break down proteins. Normally, this is not an issue, as ammonia is converted into urea in our liver, which is then excreted in the urine. So the doctors dug a bit deeper and conducted a genetic test. It was revealed that MH suffered from a genetic disorder called urea cycle disorder. Urea cycle disorder is caused by changes in the DNA sequence of the patient, and it makes the conversion of ammonia into urea very inefficient. While a protein-based diet would have been perfectly acceptable for a healthy individual, MH's genetic disorder elevated her ammonia levels, ultimately leading to her demise. This case is a rare and sad exception as roughly 1 in 8,000 to 30,000 are born with urea cycle disorder. However, there is a larger group of people that also need to be careful. Between 10 to 15% of people in the US suffer from some form of chronic kidney disease. As previously said, the digestion of protein in the intestine leads to the production of ammonia, which is converted into urea. Normally, our kidneys can filter out urea and expel it along with water in the form of urine. This process works well in healthy individuals, but can be compromised in people with chronic kidney disease. As a result, high protein diets and protein supplements can apply greater pressure on the kidneys and damage them further in the long run. While diets high in protein normally do not harm us, people with genetic disease or kidney damage should be more careful. There is also more data on animal protein and certain diseases. One big analysis compiled data from three studies involving over 200,000 people. It was found that a high intake of red meat is slightly associated with a higher risk of developing kidney stones, while plant-based proteins are not associated with kidney stones. This association was very weak though. In another study, it was found that increasing protein intake from 47 to 112 grams a day decreased the calcium in bones. But also here, these associations are weak. And then there is cancer. Diets high in meat have also been associated with various cancers. 
One recent study followed over 6,300 participants over several years. It was found that those who ate the most meat were four times more likely to develop cancer than any other group. But also here, the protein itself doesn't seem to be the issue as the same study found that there is no higher cancer risk if diets high in plant-based proteins are consumed. It is proposed that the cooking of meat can produce heterocyclic amines. These are small molecules that can interfere with our DNA and cause permanent changes and damages, and that can contribute towards cancer. The real question now is how much protein we should actually eat. Scientists have tried to answer this question for over 100 years. In 1877, Carl von Voigt started Working Class Man. He concluded that men with a body weight of 79 kilograms should consume roughly 118 grams of protein a day. Later, a group of scientists at Yale launched three studies where it was found that a total of 62 grams of protein per day was sufficient to maintain physical performance. In the middle of the 20th century, international organizations and the FAO Committee on Protein Requirements redefined these results. The current recommendations of the committee are to consume 0.83 grams of protein per kilogram or 0.37 grams of protein per pound a day. This right now is the recommended amount for a healthy adult. But of course there are a few exceptions. If you exercise regularly, you might need more protein per kilogram or pound. And elite athletes might even go further up. And in case you wonder, it is estimated that a human body can absorb between 20 and 40 grams of protein a meal. And an average human being can theoretically tolerate between 285 to 365 grams of protein a day. However, at a certain point, the additional protein will probably have no beneficial effect anymore. More importantly though, higher protein intake seems to be beneficial for elderly people. In 2018, a study tracking over 2,900 seniors over 23 years found that those who consumed the most protein were 30% less functionally impaired. A study in 2016 also found that older adults should eat between 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram or 0.544 to 0.72 grams per pound to prevent age-related muscle loss. But of course, a balanced diet also needs to be combined with regular exercise to be effective. In this way, age-related muscle loss can be slowed down. And that in the end can drastically improve the life quality of the elderly. And this is very important. A balanced diet in sports makes such a big difference when we get older. There is so much data on that, so please keep that in mind. Back to the beginning of the video. William O. Stephenson found that meat-rich diets can be healthy in some parts of the world, but cause pain and even coma in others. He was curious, dug a bit deeper and soon found a reason behind this phenomenon. The diet in the Arctic population was largely balanced. The consumed meat was rich in fat and sugars. The second diet, on the other hand, only consisted of rabbit meat, which is extremely lean. The people there didn't develop the syndrome due to the presence of protein, but the absence of fat and sugar. And this is why a balanced diet is important. So here's a quick summary. Protein, important. Protein supplements, good for building muscle. Too much protein, mostly not bad. Exceptions, genetic predisposition or kidney disease. Balanced diet with 10 to 35% of calories from protein, top tier. Oh, and TikTok, downfall to society. And with that, I'll see ya. If you're interested in how we could possibly slow down aging or another similar health video, you might like these videos.